Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Ross. This is part three of the Big Bottom Borrows. No, I mean the Big Button Form series where we're making a dynamic form with a bunch of buttons on it that can replace combo boxes, list boxes, and all that good stuff. If you haven't watched parts one and two, go watch those so you know what I'm talking about. All right, here we go. All right, so we got our tables built with all the data in them. We got a spot to store that information in the customer table. We've got our form built. Now we just got to send information to this form to tell it what we want this to look like. Now there's a lot of different ways you can pass information between forms. You can have this guy get its value from here, right? We get store them in hidden form fields. That's not very flexible though, because then you can only use it with this form. So that's, I don't like that one. You could use global variables if you want to store them in, in global variables in VBA. But then if you do run into any errors or something, those get lost and that's not a great thing. Um, you can use open args, right? I've covered that in a couple uh, different videos. I think I covered that in the custom message box video, which I told you to watch before this one. Open args are okay. You can send arguments into the form and then you can you know, do stuff that way. But since this is Adam's video, I'm going to use Adam's favorite temp vars. And I honestly think for this particular case, temp fires work best because one of the things I'm going to do later on is we're going to make a global function that calls this form and we can store all the information in temp fires and get the information back in temp fires as well. All right. So temp fires is the best solution for this particular case. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to tell this form where it's getting its data from. We're going to make an SQL statement where we're going to say we need basically what do we need? We need an ID and a caption for the button, right? For all the buttons. So it's ID one is Ford, ID two is GMC, ID three is Jeep and so on. So that's all we really have to send to it. So we're going to send to it an SQL statement with an ID and a description, what table, right? And then a sort order. So that's basically a simple SQL statement. We're going to put that SQL statement in a temp bar. So the form then knows, Hey, I'm going to go look at this temp bar to get my SQL statement. So I know what data I'm displaying, right? It'll make more sense once you can see it in action. Now, if you're a little weak with your SQL, that's okay. Go watch this video. If you need a brush up, right? Teach how to make a basic select statement from where order by, I'll be honest. I was a programmer long before I started working with access. And so I learned VBA and all that before I learned SQL. I'd probably been working with Access for five, six, seven years before I started really understanding SQL. So I was weak with the two when I first started. So go watch this if you need a little refresher. All right, so close this. Let's go back to our customer form design view. Let's go into the code behind this button. All right, so before we open this guy, because one of the benefits of using this AC dialog is as soon as it gets this line, as soon as this line is finished executing, it stops. That's the benefit of using a dialog form this way. Right. We covered that in the message box video um, and, and you can have stuff after this, but it won't it won't run until after the form is closed. So before the form here, we're going to put the SQL statement we need in a temp bars. And I'll move this over this way so we can see this a little bit. Oh, someone's beaming in. All right. So we're going to say temp bars. What are we going to call it? Let's call it button record source. It could be a table query, but ideally we're going to have it. We're going to make this a. Uh, an SQL statement equals select. Now, what are we doing first? We're doing the vehicle make ID, right? We're picking make first. So V make ID. Now, I don't want to have to deal with different ID names and different field names and description names and all that once I get into the other form. I want to make it generic, right? So I'm going to alias this. I'm going to call this as ID. So all that button has to worry about is reading a value called ID right? Next thing is the name. So V make name as button caption. So all the form has to worry about is reading a field out of the record set called button caption. It doesn't need to know what the specific names from this table are. Okay. The SQL statement handles that. All right. Want to learn more about aliasing? Here you go. All right. So we got our select, we got our fields. Um, do, 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 do. We don't need a comma there because we're just doing two fields and then we'll continue the line from what table V make T order by the V make name. So at least they're in alphabetical order. You want to change it, change it. That's fine. All right. So now in a temp bar, we have the SQL statement that the form is going to use to display its data. All right. Save that. We're good here. 
Now we have to go into the form, the big button form, and make it read that. All right, big button F, design view. All right, now we're going to find the forms open event. Go to the form properties, events, and find on open right down here. Now we're going to open a record set to loop through the records in whatever the SQL statement is that we put in that temp fires. If you need a refresher on record sets, here's a video for you. I believe these are all prerequisites in the other video that I had you watch, the, uh, the, the custom message box one. If not, I apologize. But here you go. All right, so we're going to dim RS as a record set. We're going to say set rs equals current db dot open record set. What is the, the table query or SQL statement that we want to open as our record set? Well, we just put it in a temp vars, right? So temp vars button record source. And there you go. That'll open up that record set. Okay. Now we're gonna loop through the records. So while not RS EOF, end of file, all right? Do some stuff. RS move next. I always put this in there and then the wend like that. I always put the incrementer, right? Move next, whatever you gotta do. X equals X plus one, whatever's going in there. And then end your loop. And then we're gonna RS close and set RS equals to nothing. I always do my cleanup before I start worrying about what's inside the loop. Because you always forget this and then you end up with endless loops and you get a million of the first record. All right, save that. Now, if you want to just test that it's working at this point, let's message box. And then we're just going to message box RS. And then the field we need is button caption, right? Button caption. That's it. Doesn't matter what table we're pulling off of. It's always going to be, it's always going to be called button caption, right? So at this point, I click on the button. It should open up the, that form and then just message box all the button captions, basically all the makes. All right, debug, compile, make sure that's good. Come back over here, save changes, go to customer form, click the button. All right, there we go. We got Audi, Chevy, Ford, GMC, Jeep. All right, so we know the record set loop is working, okay? But I want to assign those names to these buttons, right? And I don't want to see them, so we're going to have to change the visible properties too. So how do I know which button I need to work with? I got to go button one, then button two, then button three, right? So that's why I had you name them this way because we can use a counter and just loop through them. So back to our code, we'll need another variable, right? X as long, and we're gonna start it off as X equals one, right? So now we're on button one, and then we're gonna say right here, X equals X plus one. Now, I don't wanna message box that. What do I wanna do? I wanna set button, X's caption to RS button caption. How do I reference a control with a variable name? Well, it looks like this. This might be new to a lot of you. It's going to be me dot controls. And then in here you could put like first name or something like that. But what we have is we have button and X. See that? So it's going to be me dot controls button one, button two, button three as it's looping. See how this works? Okay, dot caption, we still have to use its caption property, equals the caption from the record set, RS button caption. Okay, save it, debug compile. I throw in a lot of debug compiles, I know. I don't like it when I hit a syntax error and it's something stupid. All right, ready? Let's close, what do we got open back here? Let's close you, come here, come here, close. Okay, ready? and click look at that see one two three four five and then we ran out of data so it ended okay all right so let's start by setting in let me close this i don't like to work on i don't like to switch from those here watch i don't like to switch from these right to design view because it, it sometimes it messes things up on you really weirdly um but let's do this let's go design view here let's set all of these buttons to not visible by default so select them all, go to format, set visible to no, save it, okay? And now in our loop, in our code, when we have set a button, then we will also set it visible. So select all of that, come over here, and say dot visible equals true. Every time the form opens, the buttons will all be invisible. We'll make the ones visible that we need to see. Save it. 
close it, click the button. Oh, we're getting there. We're getting there. It's starting to look good. All right, one more thing for today, and then we're going to call it for part three. Um, let's set this title, and we'll put the same thing in the title and in the forms caption. And again, we'll do that with temp bars. Design view. Come back in here. Right click, build event. So, what do you want to call these? Let's say um, uh, temp bars. Let's say button form caption equals, and this one's going to be make. And I'm going to start a group now. So, uh, select make. All right, because we're going to do make and then do the same kind of thing for model and so on. Okay, and now we have to make it so our form can read it. This is one of those instances where I do turn the Project Explorer on view and then Project Explorer because I'm, I'm flipping between code in two different spots. Um, I wish I could open two separate windows of this, but it, it's just too weird in here. So now we're going to go back to the, um, the big button form. And then you could put this anywhere. I put it at the bottom, right? Other settings. I should be I should be commenting more, but we'll put some comments in later. <laughs> All right, so me dot caption equals temp bars button form caption, and then also the title label dot caption equals. You can just say me dot caption. It's easier to type. It's the same thing. Okay, save it. Yes, debug compile one more time. Come back out. Meow. Let's close this. Close it. Close it. Click it, open it, and there we go. We got our make all set. We got the right buttons in here. They don't, still don't do anything. We still got to plumb these buttons. <laughs> plumb the buttons. And then, uh, yeah, then we'll, we'll move on to the next one. Lots more to come, folks. And we will pick this up on Monday. This is a Friday class. It's, today's date is, uh, the date that this is going public is Friday, August 2nd, 2024. So we will pick this up on Monday, unless you're a member. If you're a member, you can watch it right now because that's one of the benefits of being a member is you don't have to wait for my videos to go public. So tune in Mon uh, yeah, Monday. I should change this to Monday. <laughs> same bad time, same bad channel. And we'll pick it up with part four. But that is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you Monday for part four. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsor, Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions. They're manufacturing experts specializing in Microsoft Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. Check them out at accessexperts.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. 
It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members, Get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a Diamond Sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a Sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.